So the net result of concussion is this drop in energy. You can't see it, um, but you can sure feel it. Uh, you can't see it on imaging. You can't see it on other, any, any other type of um, modality. Um, during this low energy, and this is what we've learned a lot from various animal studies, is that during this energy low, the brain is very vulnerable. So any additional trauma to the head, even if the force is less, can cause a concussion. And that second concussion is much more serious than the first one and they can actually add up and become cumulative. And if those two injuries add up and just the right amount and just the right areas of the brain, the injuries can actually become fatal. And this is what's known as second impact syndrome. Now there have been a number of deaths in the United States um, and there's been uh, one in Canada over the past five years and that was Rowan Stringer. And there's actually legislation being put in now in the province of Ontario called Rowan's Law and it's to counteract this thing where we're removing people from play because the risks are quite drastic for something that is so easily preventable if we understand what's happening. So we have an energy, a low energy state that lasts for a period of time. During that low energy state, until we're back up to our full energy levels, we have this vulnerability period that can occur. The tricky part with all of this is that symptoms, and meaning how you feel, has nothing to do with the actual recovery of the brain. So you might feel great, but your energy levels are still super, super, super low, and your brain is actually still super vulnerable to that to any additional trauma. And the problem that we have a lot in sports is a lot of the decisions that we're making as healthcare providers are purely based on symptoms. So if I have a patient, well, not me, but other healthcare practitioners, if they have a patient in front of them, they'll often just ask, well, how do you feel? And they say, well, I'm feeling better. I feel my headaches are gone. I feel back to normal. And they go, okay, well, that's fine. And then they sign their letter and they're able to go back to their sport. But that, just because you feel better doesn't mean that your brain is actually recovered. Okay. Now, when we're getting into the question of how many concussions is too many, I'm going to throw this out here. It may not be the number of concussions that you get, but it may be rather how you recover from each one that matters most. I'm going to say that again. It may not be the number of concussions you get, but rather how you recover between each one that matters most. Okay, so what do I mean by that? Well, concussions, as I said, result in an energy deficit. If you get another concussion during that energy deficit, it gets worse, potentially resulting in permanent damage, potentially resulting in fatal outcomes, or at the very least, a very prolonged recovery or potential for chronic long-term effects later on in life. So the research also demonstrates that if you are able to recover from that energy deficit, and you get back up to that full energy level, there, this cumulative effect is much lessened and may not be present at all according to some of the research that we have, okay?